kind of experience that actually allows a person to affirm that they're interested in earth science. It's the ability to go out and do field work and have that kind of primary contact with what you're studying is a huge attractor for many of us. And we thirst for it and we need it. Going to some place like the Yucatan Peninsula, which is one of the major uh, places in the world where we have both the capture of CO2 from the atmosphere and also the release of it, and looking at this carbon cycle is a very, very powerful thing to do. Some of the focus of the trip was looking not only at the physical environment and how it is, but also how it functions. And so things become really interesting and complex because now we have to look at the hydrogeochemistry. We need to bring together the hydrology, which is the flow of water through the system, the geology, which is the structure and where those materials came from originally, and the chemistry, which are the controls and how that geological material gets dissolved and reworked. And a lot of that's also controlled by the biology. So nothing's ever simple. And as geologists, as our scientists, we love complex systems. The economy, the culture, the people, the human health, the environmental health, all goes back to having a sound understanding of the geology of this area. I'm personally interested in going into chemical oceanography, uh, and I don't have very much field work experience as far as collecting water samples and taking water measurement scopes and that was a large component of the trip actually. We uh, took a profile of, of a river, took flow measurements. We went to a lot of cenotes, these are sort of sinkholes basically. One underground cenote we, we went snorkeling in explored the geology that way. Around here you don't really have the reef complexes that you have down in the Yucatan. So I guess going there definitely helped like broaden our horizon of like different geological knowledge. Well the thing that I was the most excited about was taking sediment cores. So essentially what we do is we like stick a tube in the ground and plug up the top of it like kind of how you plug up the top of a straw and then pull out the water. So you plug the top of it and you pull out this big column of sand and so the youngest stuff is on the top and the oldest stuff is on the bottom, and you can kind of reconstruct what's gone on um, in the past through that. I was talking to one of the guys around there, and he mentioned, you know, this is paradise. <laughs> People, you see all the, the pictures and the postcards, it's, it's exactly like the postcards. My favorite part was probably the food. I'm eating just all sorts of Yucatan food and Mexican food, and very inexpensive but delicious tacos. It, it was a lot of overlap because all the activities that we did um, were somehow tied to, to earth science. And at the same time, they're all just a blast, you know. Cruising down the river is, is not exactly, I mean, that's certainly an awesome spring break activity, but we were also taking measurements at the same time. The overall idea of doing field work in Mexico out in the sun with all my friends and the grad students and professors and getting to learn outdoors rather than in the classroom was something that really attracted me to the trip. You're going to this awesome place, it's building enthusiasm, you're learning a lot of great things. But the other thing is it does build sort of morale in the department. You get to know people, you get to learn, you know, what research they do and it just, you know, makes it a big, much happier family in a certain sense. <laughs>